Uh, Lynn Bramer reporting live from my office. Sorry, I didn't clean up better. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine just uh, released a couple days ago their list of the 50 greatest concerts of all time. And uh, I found the list really fascinating, and there's some obvious choices on there. But I, I think we really have to start with the album that DJs for decades have said, arguably the greatest live album of all time. And I'm talking about the Who Live at Leeds. Uh, that's an album that has the 15-minute version of My Generation. And they have it in the top 10. They don't have it listed number one. The ones in the top two also have sort of socio-political overtones that go with them. But I think for bone-crushing rock and roll, it makes sense that that's in the top 10. A couple of interesting things. They cited the Rolling Stones' 1972 tour, which would have contained a lot of new music from Exile on Main Street. But I can't believe they did not point out the 1969 appearance of the Rolling Stones in Madison Square Garden, which was immortalized in the documentary Gimme Shelter. And for me, if you want to talk about bringing together uh, a sense of what was happening in the country, what was happening in rock and roll, and what was happening in the minds of teenagers and rock and roll fans in the late 60s, you watch that documentary, Gimme Shelter, and that Madison Square Garden concert is just so iconic with a couple covers of uh, Chuck Berry songs, uh, that amazing version of Little Queenie, the 8-minute, 32-second version of Midnight Rambler live, uh, which, of course, is the song that uh, I have mentioned on the air, would get me on the electronic bowling machine in college when the bar was closing to uh, dance like uh, Mick Jagger uh, because it was that awesome. Uh, I think if I were going to pick a Rolling Stones tour and a Rolling Stones live concert to make the top 50 list, uh, that would supplant 1972 in my mind. You've heard it on Get Your Yaya's Out. Uh, a lot of these uh, great concerts that they cite in the article are uh, concerts that turned into albums and turned into albums that uh, we all know. Uh, but that album, Get Your Yaya's Out, starts out with the overlaying of a couple of introductions. Is, is every, sorry for the delay. Is everybody ready? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest rock, the greatest rock and roll band in the world, the Rolling Stones. Uh, for me, that's got to be the Rolling Stones album. Also, I enjoyed the idea that the 1978 Bruce Springsteen tour uh, included his greatest concerts uh, because it was the first time I ever saw Bruce Springsteen. And if you know Bruce Springsteen fans, the first thing they're likely to say to you uh, is, you got to see him live. And I was in college radio when the first two Springsteen albums came out, and I played them a lot and really enjoyed them. But I have to tell you, third row, center, 1978, is a darkness on the edge of a town tour. And I was at the Palace Theater in Albany, New York. It was like the Chicago Theater in Chicago. Uh, holds about 2,500 people. To be that close to the stage and see Bruce Springsteen do his 30-foot knee slide during the performance of She's the One, since the most recent studio album before Darkness was born to run, it was just a it was a life changer. It was a life changing experience, and from that point on, I've never missed a Bruce Springsteen tour, and I probably never will. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind when you look at these lists, these fifty greatest concerts of all time, uh, you have a couple of uh, concerts from the band. The Last Waltz is called Greatest Rock Film Ever Made. It was made by Martin Scorsese and featured the band with all these special guests, uh, Joni Mitchell, Emmy Lou Harris, Neil Young, Van Morrison, uh, the Staple Singers, all on stage as they said farewell to their legacy. Uh, that is mentioned as one of the 50 greatest concerts, as well it should be. Uh, but also... The concerts that happened earlier than that, was that the New York Academy of Music? No, I'm spacing out a little bit. But it, it, they were the concerts that turned into the triple album, Rock of Ages, which has the amazing version of Don't Do It uh, done live. They've got a horn section. The band is at its peak. Uh, 
uh, I have to agree with them that that Rock of Ages set that turned into the uh, live album is really something you got to look at. I think w one of the top concerts they mention is uh, Jimi Hendrix's tour in 1967. Now, when I think of Hendrix in 1967, I think of how he was first told to tour as an opening act for the Monkees, and they played uh, at the Forest Hills Tennis Stadium, which is actually the neighborhood I grew up in in New York. They played the Forest Hills Tennis Stadium, and Jimi Hendrix opened for the Monkees in front of a bunch of 13-year-olds, and it did not go well because they weren't used to somebody gyrating on stage with a guitar and playing with all that feedback. They wanted to hear Daydream Believer, and Jimi Hendrix is on stage. Maybe the worst live pairing in rock history, but 1967, also the year of Monterey Pop, and that was where Jimi Hendrix had his coming out party. That's where Jimi Hendrix became uh, an American star. That's where he uh, dedicated a song to Bob Dylan's grandmother. This is where he set his guitar on fire, uh, played behind his back, and turned the world on its ear. But the thing about live concerts, whether it's Rolling Stone picking them or uh, you picking them in a bar with your friends, is the concerts that really mean something to you are, are not necessarily uh, a concert that somebody saw in Glastonbury in 1997, uh, the Glastonbury Radiohead performance is mentioned on this list. But for you, uh, Radiohead at Hutchinson Field, uh, the concert that set the stage for Lollapalooza coming to Chicago because they did kind of a dry run. Can we do a concert at Hutchinson Field and that part of Grand Park? Is that going to work as a concert? And Radiohead played there. And I remember being there with Mary Dixon. Uh, we were at the soundboard. And that was, for Chicagoans, rock and roll fans, one of the great concerts in Chicago rock history. Uh, just like that LCD sound system, there's one of the LCD sound systems mentioned on the list, but I think for people of Chicago, even before the return of LCD sound system playing at Lollapalooza, when they played Pitchfork a number of years ago, and it was the farewell tour of LCD sound system, that is the concert that you and I are going to remember, not the concert in New York or L.A. or someplace else. Uh, I could go on for another three hours, but I promised Marty Rosenbaum, our webmaster, I would not. If you have any more questions for me about the greatest concerts ever, maybe I should turn it into a Lynn's bin. You can always reach me um, on all kinds of social media. I have not one but two Facebook pages. They're both open to everybody. And also at Lynn Bramer on Twitter. And if you want to email me, you can, lynnbramer at yahoo.com. Thanks for listening. A lot of other good concerts on that list you should check out. And uh, I have to say, I I've seen most of them. You know, they talk about Prince, the Purple Rain concert. How can, I, how can I compare Prince and the Purple Rain concert to my experience of being at his nightclub in 1991, sitting at the bar, having him walk down the bar, playing a club date, and stopped to play the guitar solo of Let's Go Crazy while his shoes were almost on my fingers. See, concerts are personal. That's what it's all about.